Hey, Canterbury, we are so glad that you're joining us again in worship today. Um, And join us as we sing and celebrate God's love for us that's a light in the darkness no matter what we're going through. So y'all sing along with us.
other smiles can't conceal you And every glimmer in your spine fire as you break through yeah. Hey Canterbury, my name is Tori Hastings. I'm one of the pastors here, and this is our midweek message. I want to remind you that we're in the middle of our sermon series called Real Life Quarantine Edition, and we still need your videos. So whatever's going on at your house, whether it's schoolwork or messy laundry, uh, playing outside now that the temperatures are getting high, uh, taking a walk, showing us your pets, we want to see that. We want to see how your life during um, this time is playing out so that we can share stories just like um, you've gotten to hear some of the pastoral staff's stories. Um, this week in worship, Keith Thompson uh, talked a little bit about Jesus's encounter with the disciples on the Emmaus Road. And, and I'd like to revisit that scripture one more time, but just because I've had some really interesting conversations um, surrounding it just today, actually. And so that, that story comes from Luke's gospel, uh, the 24th chapter, beginning in the 13th verse. On the same day, Two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped their faces downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place over the last few days? He said to them, what things? They said to him, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all of the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago, but there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came to us saying they had seen a vision of angels who told them he is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women said. They didn't see him. When they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he was going on ahead, but they urged him saying, stay with us. It's nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. After he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road and when he explained the scriptures for us? Some friends and I were having a conversation during Bible study about um, this very passage. And, and one of the people pointed out that what really gripped them in these verses were their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he disappeared before their sight. And it got us all talking about the ways that, that Jesus kind of appears in glimpses and then disappears almost as, as soon as he has appeared in our lives during this time. It, it reminded me of, of the celebration that our youth staff just did for our senior highs. How during this time where they should be doing all of the things that the craziness of May has to offer, from all of the special days at school to graduation to everything else, um, they're having to find new ways to find glimpses of happiness and joy and marking milestones. And so our youth staff gave them packages and did a wonderful celebration with them via Zoom, complete with um, uh, graduation hats and uh, graduation diplomas that they got to spend time together and make that meaningful and, and, and be the presence of church and God and Jesus to one another during that time. A another friend shared recently that just this weekend was the anniversary of, of a very dear loved one and that loved one's passing. And normally every year on that anniversary, this friend goes and puts flowers on the loved one's graves. And be because of not being able to travel and because of being quarantined, the friend wasn't able to do that this year. 
But out of nowhere, got a text from, from someone who loves her dearly and says, I know that you can't do what you always do. And so I just want you to know that I went and I put flowers on the grave for you this year. A glimpse of Jesus that appears so quickly and then is gone. I, I read a book this weekend called American Dirt. And it's a story of a migration tale to the United States. And one of the characters experiences extreme loss in her life and doesn't have time to grieve those losses. And so one day she gets the idea that what she'll do is she'll take rocks and she'll paint those rocks for each person that she's lost so that she can go and visit them and make meaning and feel their presence in her life from the time that she paints them onward. And so I guess what I'm inviting you all to do during this midweek message is to open your eyes to the glimpses of Jesus among you, the unexpected ways, because sometimes Jesus comes so quickly and the presence of Christ is, is so bright in our lives that, that we can miss it if we're not paying attention. And sometimes Jesus might linger a little while with us and, and break bread and eat, and we might recognize Jesus for who he is and what he's doing, but sometimes it might happen so quickly that it's there and then it's gone. But even though so much feels disrupted, so much feels outside of our control, so much feels uncertain, one of the things that we know that we can be promised is that Jesus is always making himself present and known in our hearts and in our lives. Oftentimes, Jesus does that through uh, us, for friends or family members who are Christ's presence for us and us who are Christ's presence for our friends and family members. Another friend pointed out that the, the scripture that really spoke to her was the part where it said that the disciples' hearts were burning within them after they had an experience with Jesus. And so I hope that we're able to do that for one another as this week goes on that we can be the glimpse of Jesus, however fleeting to one another. Maybe it's through flowers, maybe it's through a text, maybe it's through a phone call, maybe it's through a, a drive-by parade as one of my friend's daughters got just last week when her friends learned that she would be moving later in the month. Whatever it is that we can do to make people know that they are loved and that they are cared for just as God knows and loves and cares for them. Is, is our call to be in service and to be Christ to one another um, this week. And so um, I hope that you remember that you were created in love, by love, and for love. And so this quarantine edition challenge I have to you is to be the presence of Jesus to one another. Notice when your heart is burning within you, even if it's just a short time because that will give you the hope and the, the courage and the looking forward uh, attitude that you need to make it to that next moment and that next moment and that next moment where you feel the presence of Jesus burning within you. I look forward to the day when we can be together um, again, when we can hug one another and feel the physical presence of each other to remind us of the physical presence of Christ. But until then, I hope that you know that we as your pastoral staff are, are caring for you, are praying for you, and any way that we can do that, please don't hesitate to let us know. Peace of Christ be with you all. is brighter and I believe in His promise for me and I believe that He's working and He's not done the best, the best still yet to come and I know He makes the anxious courageous and I know He makes the doubters believe and I know He won't stop working cause He's not done the best, the best still yet to come